A relay is like a power switch that's flipped on and off with an electrical signal, allowing us to do anything we want with a power source that doesn't need to be flipped on by a human. In addition, we can connect this to an ESP8266 microcontroller and program it in Arduino to connect to the internet and basically create a Wi-Fi controlled power switch that can control anything, including these lights. We'll show you how this works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. A relay is a small electrical component that's capable of switching larger voltages with a smaller one, making it useful for driving large voltages with something like an Arduino or a Node MCU. In this example, I have a Node MCU, which is an ESP8266 based chip, plugged into a breadboard, which is controlling a relay that then goes on to power these dollar store lights I've connected directly to a 5 volt power source. Now what this does is allow me to not only control it remotely, but connect it to Wi-Fi so that rather than putting on an onboard sensor like a passive infrared to maybe detect people nearby and turn it on like a security light, I can actually go to my browser window and send commands over Wi-Fi to get this thing to turn on or off whenever I want. Now if you want to go advanced, you can even do this so that you can access this anywhere, not just over your local network, but for this example, we'll be setting it up on our own Wi-Fi network so we can control it from any computer or phone with access to the Wi-Fi network. Now to get this to work, you're going to need a, an ESP8266 based microcontroller like this Node MCU, but you can also do this with a D1 Mini or any other ESP8266 based microcontroller board. You'll also need a relay, which are pretty cheap, from $1 to $2 depending on where you get it, a breadboard, and some sort of power source in order to supply power to whatever it is you want to power. Now this could be a Raspberry Pi, or in this case a set of lights, but you can really get creative and even use this sort of thing for home automation. Once you have all these components together, then we can begin. Now the way we're going to pull off this trick is using a library called AREST. The ultimate version of this is being able to do this from anywhere, from your cell phone, your laptop, connected over the internet. And this is the service that allows you to do so. In fact, it's actually free if you want to check it out and try a, uh, let's see, a free plan, which allows you up to five devices. But for today, we're actually just going to be taking a look at the GitHub repository associated with this and using some of the less advertised, but still very useful features. So within this GitHub repository, I've taken a little bit of code from an example, and that's what we're going to use in order to power this relay. Now you can go ahead and copy the code here by just going to this GitHub repository, take a look at the Wi-Fi relay.ino sketch, and then click on raw in order to see the raw code, press uh, control copy, and then go into Arduino IDE, and as you can see, I already have it here, but this is where you would paste it into a blank sketch. So once you open Arduino, there's a couple things you'll need to do. And I'm gonna open this up a little bit more so you can see more of the code and see exactly the changes we're going to make, as well as the things we'll need to do in order to get Arduino IDE ready for this particular board. Now, if you're using a D1 Mini or a Node MCU, you'll need to change things a little bit because the board is built slightly differently and you'll need to adjust it to make sure that we're building it for the right kind of hardware. Here we can see under tools, there is board and board manager, and you can go into here and make sure that you have the ESP8266 packages installed. Here we can see we have both of them installed, but this second one, uh, ESP8266 Community, is what you need in order to have all the various uh, Wi-Fi modules like this ready to be used with Arduino IDE. So once you install this, then you should be ready to go. However, if you're having any trouble with this, you can go back and refer to one of our previous tutorials on working with the Node MCU or D1 Mini, because you might need to in install some additional drivers that we're not going to cover here because they don't really relate to all the Node MCUs and D1 Minis out there, just kind of the cheap ones that come from China. So if you're having trouble, go ahead and check that out first. But if not, then we can get started modifying the code and making sure that we have the correct board selected. So here we will select board, and in this case we're doing a node MCU. So we'll scroll down to the ESP8266 modules and select the uh, node MCU version 1.0. With the correct board selected, we should be able to now check the code. So once we paste it in, we can go ahead and click verify and make sure that everything is good to go. 
Now, I initially encountered some trouble with uh, this library you see right here, wdt.h. And if you encounter that yourself, then it's usually because another library already installed it, and you need to go and delete the version that's been installed by another library in order to get past it. Just a little troubleshooting tip. Now, if you don't have that problem, then you should be ready to go into the code and change the Wi-Fi uh, username and password. So go ahead and put the network name here and the password to the Wi-Fi network you want this device to connect to here. So the way this is going to work is once the Arduino powers up, then it's going to automatically connect to the Wi-Fi network that we tell it to right here. Then we should be able to find the IP address by listening on the serial port eventually figuring out what the IP address is and typing it into a browser window. From there, we'll be able to turn on and off the pins, thus controlling the relay after we wire it together. With all of this happening over Wi-Fi so that we can do this from any computer or phone connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Now, once we add in the Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi network name and password here, we should be ready to go ahead and push this to our Node MCU. But first, we need to wire the components so everything works when we push the code. Now, there are three components on this breadboard that we'll need to connect in order to get everything working. First, we have the power supply here, which is connected to a power source and supplying five volts of power to these rails that go down along the side of the breadboard. We can see on the red side, that's the positive supply, and then on the blue side, we have the ground. Now, our overall goal will be to supply this 5 volts to the lights that I plugged into this part of the breadboard. But before we do that, we'll actually be passing it through the uh, relay first. Now, to get this to work, we'll have to plug this into the center terminal of the relay, also known as the common terminal. And then we'll decide whether we want to plug in the additional wire to the left or right side of the relay. Now on this side here that we've plugged into, this is called the normally disconnected terminal. And this will normally be off until we supply power to the uh, signal pin on the relay, which will then turn it on and allow power to flow through. Now on the other side, we're able to plug in a wire and have it normally connected, meaning that when we supply power via the signal, it'll turn off instead. Today, we want it to turn on when we supply power, so we'll plug it in here, and then we'll need to actually wire everything to the ESP8266, in this case, a Node MCU development board, in order to make sure that we can connect via Wi-Fi and then open it when we want to. So here on the back, we'll first connect a signal pin from the signal wire of the relay all the way to pin D7 of the Node MCU. Now you can use just about any of the D pins on the Node MCU, but I'm going to use D7 because it's relatively close to the power and ground. And I've also put in a LED here just so that I can try a separate pin and test it out before I go ahead and flip the relay. Let's say if I'm doing something like a model rocket where I don't want it to launch by accident when I'm testing it out. You can use the LED by just connecting it to pin D8 and then also connecting it to the ground on the Node MCU. Once you have the power and ground also connected to the power and ground pins on the back of the relay, you should have everything connected and be able to power the lights from the power source through the relay controlled by the node MCU, which we've programmed in Arduino. Once this is all done, we can go ahead and plug in the node MCU to a micro SD, uh, to a micro USB cable, and then we should be ready to get started controlling the relay. At this point, we should plug in our Node MCU and make sure that our computer is detecting it. Under Tools, go down to the port and look around for a serial port under which the Node MCU is connected. Here we can see that it's under Dev, su CU, and then a whole bunch of other stuff before Serial, but you'll probably find it labeled under something similar on your system. It can occasionally automatically connect, but go ahead and make sure that this is selected properly before going ahead and pressing Upload. Now press the upload button and it should attempt to upload the code to our microcontroller and you'll see the progress listed below. Once it's complete, we can find out which IP address it's been assigned by the Wi-Fi network by going to tools and then clicking on the serial monitor. But if we do this before it's finished uh, totally transferring the code, this can sometimes mess it up. So let's wait until it's totally done. There we go. Now we have the code pushed to our microcontroller, so we should be ready to go ahead and communicate with it, but we don't know the IP address yet. So let's go to Tools and then Serial Monitor, and we'll also need to match the baud rate if this serial looks like just nonsense. 
So here we can see the serial is set to 115200. Let's set it to the same rate. There we go. And now we can see that the IP address is 192.168086. Cool. So now we're connected to the Rust API. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and do this the advanced way, we could also configure this so that we can connect to it via pretty much anywhere. But for now, we're connected to our local Wi-Fi network, so that should be everything we need to send some commands. So let's get started. We'll go ahead and go to a browser window, and we'll use the new IP address that we know in order to format a command to send to our device and make sure that everything's working. First, we'll type in the IP address we saw before. And then we'll specify whether we want to do a digital or analog command. So we'll start with analog because we need to set the pins to output mode. And a good way to do this is to just send an analog command to one of them to pulse some power. So we'll start with our test pin, which is the one that we connected an LED to, which is pin number eight. And we're going to go ahead and specify we want to send an analog signal and we want it to turn on a pin to the value of one, which can go all the way up to 255. So this will just turn on a pin just a little bit. So let's go ahead and send this off. And there we go. We see we get a JSON response and we've actually managed to set the pin on our test uh, LED to one, which make, is making it uh, light up just a little bit. So then we can do the same to our pin that is connected to the relay, which is pin seven. So in doing so, we've now turned it on with just a little bit of voltage, but not enough to actually trip the relay. So we've effectively armed the relay and made sure that it is ready to fire. Let's go ahead and switch this from analog to digital. And we're gonna go ahead and specify the value of zero so that we're turning it completely off, even though we've set the pin to output mode so that we are ready to fire our command to turn it on. Now, digital is different than analog in that the one or zero value indicates fully on or fully off. So when I replace this zero with a one, as soon as I press enter, this will go ahead and switch the relay from off to on, powering the lights and or any other device that you want to power. With everything taken care of, we can just take this command here and put it into any device that's connected to the same Wi-Fi network. As soon as we press enter, it'll switch the relay on. Okay, now that we've wired the relay, connected everything, and set the pin to output mode, we should be able to send a single command via the browser and watch the light light up. So let's give it a try. There we are. Relays are incredibly useful, and you can power more than just this with them. In fact, if you're really interested in this, you can take it to the next level and be able to actually forward this so you can connect to them over the internet and turn them on and off from anywhere. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.